for a while now, I've wanted to do one of those videos where we come up with a wish list of features we want to see in a camera. I've been thinking a lot about this for the work that I do, and I've got my list, and there may be a camera that matches it near perfectly, and I might be holding it in my hand. Before we get to the camera in my hand though, I want to spend a moment talking about what I have been using over the past year and how that's driven my wish list. So for just over a year now, I've been shooting with a Sony a7R Mark II and there's very little to complain about photo quality wise. That camera can produce some amazing images. The only downside is to get those amazing images, you do need to have nice full frame lenses on there and those nice full frame lenses are heavy. I also, as you probably know, I make these videos. And the Sony, while an awesome video camera as well, is not very user friendly. And for a lot of the travel work I do, does not really suit the vlog style videos. That's where I kind of just hold the camera in front of me and point it right at me with the screen turned around so I can see what it sees and make quick, easy videos, share with you all what I'm up to and what I'm doing. For that, I found that the Panasonic GH4 is near perfect. It's got fantastic battery life. It's got that user-friendly, just ergonomics and articulating screen that is a touch screen. It's got battery life that goes forever. It works really well. And so that's what I use for my videos, but it's not so great for photos. And even in low light, the videos do start to suffer some, but honestly, for my vlog style, I really don't mind a little grain in the lower light. I think that's more true to life of what I'm experiencing. So I'm carrying around both of those cameras and of course the lenses that go with them. And that starts to add up. And one of the things that I've realized as I've traveled is I really want to travel lighter. Now I think the easiest way to get lighter is to go to one system, especially one system that offers a smaller sensor so the lenses are smaller. So I'm holding in my hands the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. This is not a review of this camera but it is kind of a possibilities and potentials that I want to talk about and set the stage and check back in with you in about a month because that's how long I'm going to be shooting with this camera to see if it can replace my Sony and my Panasonic. Let's start off with the most appealing feature of the Panasonic and this is true of all the Micro Four Thirds systems is that the bodies and lenses combined are really small and lightweight. When you compare what I've been carrying around to what I could potentially be carrying around, it is a huge difference. And another really exciting thing about the Olympus is that ridiculous stabilization. I've been able to handhold one and two second long shots. Handhold that long. I've seen people handholding longer ones. I, I might have some two or three seconds that are decent. Beyond that it starts to get a little blurry, but that is the potential of leaving behind a tripod in some situations. So you're not only lightening your load with your camera itself and the lenses, but accessories that go along with it. And that's something else about this camera specifically. It is feature packed. I really look at these cameras these days as tools, tools that allow me to get a job done, make nice pictures, share with you all to convince you that I'm a decent photographer, make videos about what I'm doing, teaching you, sharing where I am, and having a system that will allow me to do that efficiently, easily, is the tool that I want to have in my camera bag. And things like time lapse is built in, and of course that stabilization again. Maybe I'll be able to leave the gimbal behind in some situations and create as smooth as footage as I need without a gimbal. Now, I don't think it's going to completely replace a gimbal in all situations, or I should say I know it's not. But still, that's another period or another, another potential for this camera that I'm excited about. I'm jumping around here a little bit, but not only are the lenses small and extremely portable and lightweight, but there is a huge selection as well. The Micro Four Thirds is a standard. You have excellent lenses by Panasonic, Olympus, and a whole host of third-party options. It's also come to my attention that I don't really baby my gear. You know, I don't want to worry about my gear. Again, it is a tool for me, and that tool needs to operate in all of the conditions that I'm operating in. So if it's raining a little bit, or if it's really cold, or if it's really dusty, or 
If I, my camera bag is farther away from me than I can step too quickly and I need to toss my camera over to it, you know, those are things that I want to be able to do and not worry. And I have to say, the Olympus series seems excellently rugged. And so that's a nice feature that again, should help. All right, now it's not all roses over here. I do have some concerns and this is commenters I'm gonna tell you now, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you think this experiment is going to succeed? Am I going to be able to say, so long Sony, so long Panasonic, I've got one camera that's gonna do it all for me now and I'm gonna be happier and my back is gonna be happier and I'm gonna travel light and free, skipping through the daisies? I really don't know. I do have some concerns and I'll share those with you now. The first probably is price. That's a lot to pay for one micro four thirds camera. Two grand is what this is releasing at. That's a concern. But if it can do everything that I need it to, it's certainly replacing two cameras that I paid a lot more total for than two grand, so we'll see. Another concern is low light performance. You go to that smaller sensor, you're certainly giving up some performance in low light. I know that. Is it going to be too much? Am I gonna be unhappy with a huge difference? Is it gonna be a huge difference? from my Sony full frame sensor to this. And I'm also a little worried about AF performance in low light. I've seen a couple of things that made me hesitate just in shooting with this now for about a week off and on. And I'm adding this one. I didn't have it written down, but I also noticed very recently that the Panasonic app that I use to set up these shots, I'm filming all of this solo, if you couldn't tell, because some of the shots are a little funky probably. I use the Wi-Fi app to control the camera, frame it, autofocus it, set the settings so that the exposure is decent, and it works really well. The Olympus app I've seen, and I've played with a little bit, and I, maybe I'm missing a switch over to the more advanced setting, but it's pretty basic and disappointing. So, there are my concerns. And as I said, commenters, I'd love to hear from you. Do you think this will be a success? Or will I say, nope, I need to continue to carry around my gear? Or do you think there's some other piece or camera that I'm missing that would be better suited that could do everything that I need it to? I'd love to hear from you. I love these discussions. I read all of them, even if I don't get to respond. So you can leave that right down below. If you found this video interesting, give it a quick thumbs up. I appreciate that as well. And if you're not already a subscriber and you'd like to see how this, I was gonna say wild experiment, I don't think it's really a wild experiment, how it turns out, you should subscribe. And if you really wanna interact, give me your opinion and have my opinion on what gear is best for you, you should check out the support group I run and all of the various ways that you can support me through Patreon. Links for that are right down below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.